Hi, Jeff Messer here from SizeStream, and welcome to our customer success series, where we take a first-hand look at how our customers are utilizing 3D body scanning for their business. In this installment, we will be looking at applications for 3D body scanning in the health and fitness industry. More specifically, we wanted to know if a body scan can accurately measure body fat percentage. Moreover though, we wanted to answer an important question. Is the SciStream 3D body scanner a good means of tracking body change throughout a person's fitness journey? We know the body fat percentage number is important to health and fitness users, but we also believe 3D body scanning offers a more complete picture of how a person's body changes as they look to slim down, bulk up, or maintain their fitness level. So, we sat down with some experts at the University of Missouri to talk about some research they have been doing around the various tools for measuring body composition. The best use of body composition assessment is tracking to see if the body's changing with our programs. Whether you're an exercise physiologist that's uh, implementing a new exercise program or a dietitian that's looking at a new diet, we want to know how the body's changing. I'm Steve Ball. I'm a professor of nutrition and exercise physiology here at the University of Missouri. Uh, I've been studying body composition for 17 years. My name is Jill Barnes, and I am a fourth year PhD student at the University of Missouri Columbia, or Mizzou. Body composition assessment's always been problematic. To really know how much body fat someone has, we would have to do a cadaver analysis, which obviously isn't realistic. And um, you know, most people don't have a laboratory budget to, to do research like we do. And so um, anytime a new method comes out that might be applicable out in the field and even in a clinical setting like this, uh, we, want to, we want to study it. And so the scanner came along, we wanted to see how it compared to DEXA. And we wanted to see how it compared to a field method like skin folds because I think it has uses in both settings. Could it be used in a clinical setting? We don't know yet, but that's one of the reasons we've included it in the study. But also, could it be used out in the field? Could it be used at a fitness center or at a local gym where a trainer could see if their clients are changing over time? And ultimately, what we found is that the scanner is as good as skin folds compared to a laboratory criterion method uh, such as DEXA and so I think we have high hopes and high promise for the scanner to be used in, in not only a clinical setting but also out in the field. One of the cool things that I really like about the body scanner um, is it can really give us a lot of detailed information on how the body's changing over time. Whereas when we look at, um, say, the bod pod, for example, it's really just giving us how a different change in body fat percentage. And so uh, we looked at how the body scanner compared to DEXA, which is the gold standard method of body composition assessment. That's what you're going to see in, in laboratories like, our, like we have here or in big clinical trials. They're going to use that because it is the, the best way to do it, but it's, it's pretty unrealistic that you're going to have that out in the field. And we compared the bod pod to DEXA, and we compared skin folds to DEXA, and then we added the scanner in and ultimately decided that it was as accurate as skin folds in the bod pod compared to DEXA for predicting body fat percentage. So in a, in a field setting, right, it's really fast. It can give us that detailed information. Hey, is your stomach changing? Are your thighs changing? Are your biceps changing? In a, in a very easy... Um, and, and really, it doesn't take a lot of training to use the machine. Typically out in the field, we've used a couple different methods to assess body fatness. So if you go to a local fitness center, you're going to see one of two things typically. You're going to see skin folds, which are pinches, where a trainer goes and pinches uh, subcutaneous fat and you put it into a formula and it spits out a total body fat percentage number. Or in, in recent years, bioelectrical impedance analysis, and it, it looks more sophisticated, right? And the clients come in, you either put them on a scale, or sometimes it's just a handheld device, and it, it's sending a current through the body, and it, again, it's predicting body fat percentage. It's not any better than skin folds, and there's a lot of error associated with it, especially with um, hydration. And so it's about equal to skin folds, but not any better if you compared it to DEXA. And so, um, the thing I like about the scanner, it's given us a lot more information than, than skin folds or BIA. And um, 
our data show that it's just as accurate in spitting out that ultimately what people are interested in is that body fat percentage number. One of the key things that came out of the study is that we were able to develop two new prediction equations for the scanner that spits out a body fat percentage that they work very well uh, compared to DEXA, just as well as skinfold equations might. Yeah, and we developed the two equations where one was for men and one was for women. And the population that we used for this study was actually fairly fit and young. Um, so now we need to take those equations and we need to bring them out to other populations to see if they still work. That's right, and and also have a validation study on, on a similar population right. to this. So uh, I think there's, again, high promise for the scanner as a way to not only give us all these different body measurements, but to actually predict body fatness. So what you're seeing on the left side of the screen is all the methods that were used in this study. Um, JP is each of the skin folds that were developed by Jackson Pollock. So you have the JP3A and JP3B, which are three skin fold site equations. We have the Jackson Pollock 7, which or JP7, which is the Jackson Pollock 7, which is seven site skin fold equation. And then we also have the Ball equation, which is an equation that was developed in our laboratory by Dr. Ball. Um, and it utilizes the DEXA as a criterion reference. So these equations have actually um, been developed to not replace, but to um, better skin fold equations. The BotPod is a, a clinical research device that we have access to in our lab um, and is held up to be fairly accurate. And then we have the Department of Defense equation, which is currently used in the size stream uh, system. And then we use our DEXA as our criterion reference for the measurements. And what do you think about body fat percentage as a key performance indicator? Is that a good number to look at? If you want me to be honest, I really don't think the absolute number means a lot. I want to know if it's changing over time because everybody's going to function differently at a different body fat percentage. There are some ranges. There's a healthy body fat percentage range, right? There's a performance body fat percentage range. But that number is going to depend on how it's assessed, how it's measured. If we use DEXA, we're going to get typically a different number than if we use skin folds. And depending on which formulas you use for skin folds, they'll typically underestimate compared to DEXA. So again, the best use of body composition assessment, in my opinion, is tracking over time. Are the programs that we're putting people on working?